Hello everyone and welcome to MES's e-learning channel. In this video, we'll be trying to solve an example of Booth's algorithm for multiplication. But here we'll have signed numbers. We'll have a positive as well as a negative number. So we'll get a better idea of how to solve this numerical. So this is a very important topic. You should definitely try to solve multiple examples because if you get a right answer at the end, there's a great chance that you'll get full marks. Okay, so just don't skip this topic. So let's begin with the numerical. Here we in the question, we, have, we are asked to do 9 into minus 10. So here we have a negative number. Our multiplier is a negative number. So we know 9 into minus 10 is nothing but what minus 90. We can also cross check, verify once we get the final answer. If it's minus 90, then we have solved it correctly, right? Also in the question, they have given us n is equal to 5, meaning the size of the register to represent these numbers, 9 and 10 is 5. So we have to represent these numbers in 5 bits only, right? And since the size of the register is 5 bits, the number of steps that you're going to do is 5 steps. So basically, you'll check the bits. What do we check? We check Q0 and Q-1. And whatever is the uh, combination that we have in Q0 and Q-1, we do the respective thing, and then we do an arithmetic right shift. And then we go to the next step. So this thing you have to do for five times. Why? Because in the question they have said n is equal to five. Now, one important thing that we have to keep in mind is that we represent the numbers correctly. If we represent the numbers in a wrong manner, we are sure going to get a wrong answer, okay? So one thing you have to remember is that when you have a negative number, always represent the negative number using two's complement only, right? So one thing you have to keep in mind that the size of the register is 5. So now 9 is a positive number, right? So we can simply write it. Okay, so I've written m is nothing but what? Our multiplicand, right? So multiplicand has 9 and 9 is represented as what? 1, 0, 0, 1, right? But they, in the question they have said 5 bits. So what we have to do? We have to add one extra 0. So this has become 5 bits, okay? And uh, since this is, this is, 9, what is minus m? Minus m is minus 9. So we'll already do it and keep it for beforehand so that we have it for reference. Why? Because we also have to do what? a minus m and a minus m is nothing but what? We simply add 2's complement of m with a. So it will be handy for us to uh, keep it aside, okay, before only, before we start solving the sum. So what is minus n? We'll write a 2's complement of 9, which is what? So as a simple trick, so this one, what you do, whatever is the LSB, right? LSB is what? One. After that, you just have to invert the numbers. So zero becomes one, zero becomes one, one becomes zero, and zero becomes one. So this is two's complement of nine. So this is what? Minus M. Done. Now, the second number or the multiplier that this is given in the question is a minus 10. So minus 10. Now we know how to represent 10, right? So if Q is minus 10, what is minus Q? Minus Q is what? 10 only. Again, in the question, they've said 5 bits. So we'll represent it using 5 bits. So 10 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? We are aware it is nothing but 1, 0, 1, 0. But since in the question, they've said 5 bits, we've taken one extra 0, right? Now, Q is minus 10. So what we simply are going to do, we are going to take a 2's complement of this 10. So we get a minus 10. So how do we do it? We are aware. LSB remains as it is, so 0 remains 0, then 1 is inverted. You have to keep uh, the LSB as it is, you have to keep on keeping the numbers as it is till you find a 1 actually, right? So here in the LSB itself, there was a 1, so we kept it as it is, and then after that we inverted the bits. Now here we have a 0, which is not a 1, right? So again we go ahead, there's a 1, okay. So now a 1 is there, so after this 1, you start inverting the bits. So now this 0 is going to become 1, this 1 is going to be a 0, and this 0 is going to be a 1. So now this is your minus 10, okay? So I hope you understood how to represent the numbers. So it's a very good practice to keep uh, the numbers returned beforehand itself. One, you have to keep in mind that you have to represent the numbers in the number of bits or the, uh, the size of the register which they have given in the question. So we have represented the numbers. And while taking the negative number, make sure you're taking it in its two's complement only. So it's very simple to understand, right? So once this is done, we start with the Booth's algorithm. So since this is the size of the register is five, we are going to do how many steps? We are going to perform five steps. 
So for the first step, what we'll do, we'll first fill all the registers. So we also have to keep in mind that we have to place the accumulator first, then the contents of Q register, which is nothing but our multiplier, and then Q minus one bit, which is a one bit register, and initially it is always equal to zero. Also, the accumulator is also always equal to zero initially, and it is going to have how many zeros? It is going to have five zeros. Why five zeros? Because in the question they have given, the size of the register is five bits. Then Q is what? Q is minus 10. So this is our Q. So we write over here, which is one, zero, one, one, zero. And then Q minus one is obviously initially equal to zero. So we've placed our contents now. The first step is to compare the Q zero bit, which is this bit, and Q minus one. So if both the bits are zero, what do we do? We simply go ahead and we perform arithmetic right shift. So since both are zero, zero, what are we going to do? We are going to perform arithmetic right shift just like that. So MSB comes here and also comes here. Other bits are simply shifted towards right and the final bit is gone outside okay the lsb goes out so first step is done now let's come to the second step so what is the second step again we compare the q 0 bit with the q minus 1 bit now the combination is 1 and 0 so if the combination is 1 and 0 what do we do we do a minus m so whatever is there in the accumulator is added with what minus m so what is minus m we've already kept minus m over here so what are we going to do this is your our accumulator content we are going to add minus m to it which is one zero one 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 right and finally what we'll get since we are adding it to zeros only it is going to be as it is then this is our q okay and then this is q minus one so after this we are going to do a arithmetic right shift right now we'll perform arithmetic right shift so this one comes here and here 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 and this one this 0 goes out okay so this is our second step completed now let's come to the third step in the third step, again, what we are going to do, we are going to compare these two bits. Since both are 1, what do we do? We simply perform arithmetic right shift. So this bit comes here, also here, and 1, 0, 1. This one comes here, this 1, this 0, 1, 0. This one comes here, this 0 goes out, right? So our third step is also done. Now let's come to the fourth step. Again in the fourth step, we compare these two bits, right? Again, it is a zero and one. So if it is a zero and one, what do we do? We don't simply go ahead and do an arithmetic right shift. Instead, what we do is we do A plus M and whatever is the answer is saved back into the accumulator. So this is our accumulator. We are going to add it with what? With M. So M is what? Nine. So nine, zero, one, zero, zero, one. And this is 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. This one comes here, 1, 0, carry 1, 1, 1, 0. Whatever the carry generated is gone, we don't consider it. Now, after this is done, we do a right shift, an arithmetic right shift, right? So 0 comes here, this 0 also comes here, this comes here, 1, this 1, this 0, this 1 comes here, 1, 0, 1. This comes here and then this is discarded, right? So fourth step is also done. Now our last and final fifth step, we compare the Q0 bit with Q minus one. This is a one zero O. So we just can't perform arithmetic right shift, right? So what we have to do, if it is a one and zero, what we do? We do A minus M. We subtract accumulator content with what M? So what do we mean when we subtract? We are simply adding two's complement of M. So what is two's complement of M over here? It is this thing. So what are we going to do? We are going to add this number with the accumulator content. So let's go ahead and do, a, do, do that. One, zero, one, one, one. One plus one is zero. Carry one, 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 zero, carry one. And one, a zero, a one, and a one, right? Now let's do a right shift, arithmetic right shift has to be performed. 
So this one comes here, this also comes here, then this one is here, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, right? So this is what we've done, 5 times we've performed, right? So this is our accumulator content, and this is our content in the Q register. We discard Q minus 1, we are not interested in that. Whatever is the answer is a combination of these two things only. So whatever finally comes, combined is our answer of multiplication. So now basically we will see what is uh, 9 into 10, it is minus 90. So if you put it into your calci or if you do the 8421 method, you will come to know that this is nothing but what? It is equal to minus 90. Okay. I hope you have understood. Still you have any doubt, you can feel free to put it down in the comment section. Thank you for watching.